Hi, my name is Hector Garcia, and I want to talk to you about recurring transactions in QuickBooks Online. So we've had this feature for a year, year and a half or so, recurring transactions for QuickBooks Online. However, they added some uh, real nice improvements uh, during the month of August 2016. So I'd like to cover what recurring transactions are, how to do them in QuickBooks Online. And I also want to talk about those uh, little um, improvements that they did this month. So we're looking at QuickBooks Online in the screen right now. And a recurrent transaction basically is when you take an invoice, a bill, any transaction that you needed to duplicate itself every single month, you can turn it into a recurrent transaction. There are also recurrent transactions that do not necessarily repeat every so often. They are just there saved as a template per se for you to pull later. So let me use uh, both examples. So first I wanna create an invoice. And let's say that in this invoice, I have a, a package. I have a particular set of products and services that are packaged and priced in a certain way. And every so often um, somebody com comes in and buys the exact same package. But uh, there's just a lot of work in putting all the items together, putting all the descriptions together, putting all the prices and basically making a recurrent transaction that just saves as a template will be very useful to not have to type everything else over and over. So let's say for example that this package contains everything that I'm configuring here and also just kind of think about how long it takes you for you to type up the description um, of the you know custom package whatever um, it happens to be right okay so there's my custom package and let's say every once in a while uh, clients uh, come to me and they want to buy the exact same package but I don't want to sit there and retype everything that's on the screen okay so what I'll do is I'll click down here where it says make recurring so I'll click on that and then you're going to see this top portion um, be added in the top, which is basically all the recurring options. So we have to give the template a name. So let's call this one a uh, backyard package. Okay, because this is a landscaping company that we're using for an example. And then under type, I got three options. I got scheduled, reminder, and unscheduled. So the first example we talked about is something that is not going to repeat itself automatically, that is going to be there for me to recall it when I need it. So I'm gonna put it as an unscheduled. And then I don't have to really do anything else other than maybe changing the description, whatever it happens to be. And then I click on save template, okay? I do have to select a customer here. So I'll pick any customer here at random and then go to uh, save template, perfect, okay? So once uh, the template is saved, I can always recall it anytime that I need it. So how do I recall recurrent transactions? Where well, I click on the gearbox up here on the right, and then I'll click on recurrent transactions. And every single transaction that I marked as recurring will be listed here. And I can show uh, the ones that are scheduled. These are the ones that are gonna be automatically repeated every month, every quarter, however often we set it up for. Uh, and then here I can select the unscheduled, which are the ones that I have saved as a template. So at this point, I only have this one as a template. And if I ever needed to pull that later on, I can just click on this use button and the use button will open up the invoice and recall all the components from that invoice. And at that point, all I have to do is change the customer, whoever that customer um, is going to be in the future. So that's pretty much the function of unscheduled recurring transactions. Let me go back to the homepage here and let's talk about um, scheduled recurring transactions. So let's say for example, I have the bill for my rent, for my office rent, and that I want to repeat every month because I don't wanna be having it as a template and having to pull it on demand. I just want it to be automated. So I'm gonna click on the create button here at the top and then I'll click on bill. I'll, I'll select my landlord's name, whatever my landlord's name happens to be. And I will put here on the rent or lease. And let's say my rent or lease is $1,200 a month. And then down here where it says make recurring, this is where I program this to uh, re uh, duplicate itself every single month. So I click on make recurring, same screen comes up. Under type, I have to make sure I click scheduled. And then it says create blank days in advance. This is 
um, when the bill gets created, let's say, for example, November 1st, I want to know how many days before November 1st this is going to show up in my accounts payable just in case I need to pay this bill in advance or I want to know a couple of days in advance. So I'm going to put here 10 days in advance. So basically starting August 21st, my September 1st bill will show up. Then under interval down here, this is where I pick how often this repeats. So daily, weekly, yearly, whatever you want. So I'm going to put here monthly. Then on which day of the month? Well, I can just put day first day of the month right so i can put uh first i can put first weekday if i want to or i can put day and i can put first day of the month there's a lot of neat options here i can pick um the fourth you know wednesday of every month to be the the interval i can pick uh the last uh, wednesday or tuesday whatever day of the week or i can pick uh just day and put first and i can go all the way down to the last day okay now um on, on the interval quarterly is not an option so if you want it quarterly you will still pick monthly but then you would put every three months so that's essentially how you make it quarterly uh, so we're going to leave it at one uh first day of one month start date i'll put here no, uh, november 1st that will be the start date and then ending means when i want to uh, finish um, this recurring bill. So I have a couple of options. I can put after and I can say, look, only do it 12 times and then end it because maybe 12 months from now this bill will get uh, changed because my rent will change and then I can just stop it and the way I have to kind of remind myself to enter it again. Or I can put buy and just pick a hard date, a specific date in which my lease will end. Let's say in this case is, um, let's put here December 1st. And then the December 1st will be the very last recurring bill that will be created. And then I click on save template. And then I don't have to go back and pull the recurring bill again, just like I did it with the other option. I'm going to click on gearbox and recurring transactions, just so I can show you on their template type of schedule. So this whole properties one is there. It lets me know um, in this screen, it lets me know exactly what, uh, what the status of it is. It tells me, um, what the vendor is, the next date, all that stuff. Okay, here in the gearbox, I can show more or show less if, if I happen to have a whole bunch in there. Now, those are the two most important ones. We have the scheduled recurring transactions and the unscheduled recurring transactions. In uh, August of 2016, they added a couple of really cool new features, which is here on the right side um, under edit or next to edit. You can click on use, which is the same button I press to enable the unscheduled one, or I can click on duplicate. So let's say, for example, I have another bill from another vendor that's very similar um, that has the same exact configuration. I can just click on duplicate and it will create uh, a, a new bill with the same exact settings as my old recurring. And I can just change uh, the vendor's name, the name of it, the dating. So this really can speed up my process if I have a lot of unscheduled, I mean, a lot of scheduled transactions there's also pause pause is pretty pretty cool so if for whatever reason we just don't want these to repeat for the next two or three months um i can just pause it and then come back here and uh and uh where is it um and uh resume it right so i can just pause it and then resume it later and you're gonna see here where it says paused so you'll know um you know that those are there they're saved but they're paused um i can also resume it here and then I have a couple of options here. I can delete it and skip next day. That's really, really good. A very commonly uh, requested feature is, you know, for whatever reason, look, less, next month I'm not going to get that bill or I already created the bill by hand by mistake or I created a check by hand by mistake and I just want, don't want QuickBooks to duplicate the transaction for me. I can just click on skip next date and I'll press that button and then you're going to see that the next day will be automatically updated. And then the previous one will be skipped. That means the transaction will not be created at all. Okay. Uh, I'll show you one last thing, which is a recurring transaction that is set up to be a reminder. So for example, let's say that I get a bill from Com Comcast every single month, but it's not um, the same dollar amount. So I really don't want to create it recurring uh, just because I'm just kind of worried that by having the bill recurring there, I'm not going to actually update the amount so what i can do is i can create the bill 
okay? And then here under amount, I'm gonna put here one million dollars, some some really high number, and then put in description uh, monthly Comcast bill check amount or something like that. This is just for me to just know what this bill is supposed to be, and then when I make it recurring, I'm not gonna schedule it or unschedule it. I'm gonna put it on reminders. It's really interesting um, how this works. So in the reminder list. Um, I'm going to put it here uh, five days before it's due. I'm going to put here that it's monthly and I get it, let's say, the 8th of every month. And on the start date, I'll put uh, the 8th of the next following month. So basically, I'll put here uh, 10 days before. That way it's, it falls into my uh, reminder period. So uh, let's say 15 days before, just to double check. So um, this bill is going to be created um, on... Uh, September 8th, uh, today is the 27th of August. So as long as I'm within those 15 days reminder, it will be in my reminders list. So when I click on uh, save template, okay, so now officially that transaction is in my reminders list. So now that I created my reminder, uh, to pull my reminders, I just click on the gearbox up here in the top right, and then I'll click on recurring transactions. And I can either just click on template type and click reminder and that would give me my list of reminders or I can hit this little arrow on the where it says reminder list and click run report and that is going to take me to what's called uh, the memorized transaction report which can be grouped by template type by transaction type by customer by accounts it's actually pretty neat um, being able to organize my recurrent transactions based on uh, many options here. So I really think that all of these are um, really useful tools in terms of organizing uh, your reminders. Now, I strongly recommend that you add these reminders to your bookmarks so you can uh, you know, bookmark the page and then uh, pull it up later on. Um, and the reason for that is because there isn't a quick shortcut to the reminders list here on the homepage that would actually be kind of nice and that will be here on the right side. So it is kind of a two-step process. So if you have it bookmarked, you can uh, click straight on the, where did I put it here? It's in my bookmarks here somewhere. You can go straight to the bookmark and I'll take you uh, straight to that screen because that's actually a really good uh, screen uh, to work on, okay? So those are basically um, all the recurring transactions in a nutshell. Other really important thing is something that people really don't realize is you can also create the recurring transactions from scratch by going into the gearbox and clicking on recurring transactions. And then here on the right, it says new. So if I click on new, then at that point, I can just select the type of recurring transaction that I want to do. Let's say that we have a recurring bank transfer of $200 every month from one bank account to another. I can just click the transfer, hit OK, and then it'll take me straight into a regular transfer transaction. I can go here from checking to savings and put here, let's say you know, 1,000, whatever it happens to be. Um, and then I can just make it recurring here. I can just call it uh, transfer. And this one wouldn't be a reminder. This would be a schedule. So I would schedule this on the first month of every month, starting now, ending never, save template. And then all these transactions will be created automatically on their date or due. Or as I mentioned earlier, you can always also initiate them. You can initiate them from here. So if you wanted to go to the transaction itself and click on use, that would actually push it and initiate it. So those are the three um, types of recurring transactions in a nutshell and all the new features added up to end of summer of 2016.